This week on Word from Jerusalem. Welcome to the world from Jerusalem and also welcome to Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem is the premier organization here in the land of Israel to commemorate the Holocaust, but also to study and to research everything which has to do with the greatest atrocities which took place in Europe during Nazi uh, occupation, when through Nazi Germany more than six million Jews have been killed all across Europe. We are here right now in a place at Yad Vashem, which is called the Valley of Community. And here in this Valley of Community, in all the walls, which are here, they are all the communities mentioned and carved in stone where Jewish people lived 70, 80 years ago in Europe. Most of those communities today, they don't exist anymore because there are no survivors anymore. But some of those communities, they might exist, but only a very small remnant of them. We see here places like Nuremberg, Dinkelsbühl, Nottlingen, or Augsburg. These were all communities very close to where I was living. And from all those communities today, either they are completely wiped out or only a very small remnant of them is still left over. Germany had, for example, before World War II, around 350,000 Jews. After World War II, only 20,000 Jews survived the atrocity of the Holocaust in Germany. The question what we want to pose today, how was this possible that such an evil came into a cultivated continent, into a cultivated nation like Germany? What drove those people which made them kill six million Jews all across Europe? And what are the lessons which we can learn today? What you see behind me is one of those wagons where thousands of Jews were brought into the gas chambers of Auschwitz. In cattle wagons like these, millions of Jews were brought to their final destiny, which were the death camps of Auschwitz, Treblinka, and many others across Europe. And again, the question arises, what caused humanity, a cultivated people like the Germans, to commit such atrocity against God, but also against humanity? The history of anti-Semitism actually goes as far back as the history of the Jewish people itself. The very first anti-Semitic king or leader can be found in the book of Exodus, when Pharaoh decreed a law against the Jewish people to decimate the Jews which are living in Egypt. And he became the very first anti-Semitic leader in Jewish history, which tried to annihilate the Jewish nation in his kingdom. But even as the Jewish Jewish people left Egypt through the Exodus and came to their land, one king after the other would arise which would try to destroy the nation of Israel and to uproot them from their land. And the, the, the greatest uh, person probably which is affiliated with anti-Semitism and with pure Jew hatred is a person which we find in the book of Esther. His name is Haman. Haman was a man who was living during the time of the Babylonian Empire and he saw the the Jewish people which were refugees and exiled in Babylon and he went to the king Ahasuerus and he told him there is a people group living among us they have different customs than us they keep different traditions they are a people which believes in a different God and he says let us annihilate them and it was under king Ahasuerus under the leadership of Haman when a holocaust was being planned during the Babylonian empire but then again during the 
here throughout the history again and again kings would arise which would try to wipe out the Jewish nations all through the centuries of the Middle Ages, through the Crusades, through the Spanish Inquisition, through many of the pogroms in Eastern Europe, hundreds of thousands of Jews would have been killed just for the very purpose and for the very reason to annihilate the Jewish race on this earth. And of course, only 70 years ago in Europe, in Nazi Europe, in Germany, Hitler, the greatest of all the anti-Semites arose and he had a master plan to kill 11 million Jews which were living in Europe at that time. And we know the history, he succeeded in killing 6 million Jews, wiping out entire communities. And we have to ask ourselves, what was the reason why all those people, Pharaoh, Haman, Adolf Hitler, had such a hatred against the Jewish people? Now the question is, why do people who hate God and who have an, an hatred against the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, why do they also hate the Jewish people? And I believe to understand that why hatred against God, hatred against the Jewish people actually are very closely linked together, we need to understand the calling of the Jewish people. We need to understand why God actually chose the Jewish people to be here on this planet for, at the first place. In Genesis chapter 12, when Abraham was receiving the call from God to be a nation and to establish the Jewish people, God called him and he says, Behold, I will go, I'm going to bless you. You shall be a blessing and I will make you a great nation. And then he says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, he says, And through you, Abraham, and through your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. That means God has chosen the Jewish people to become a vehicle of blessing for human mankind. It is very similar to what Paul says in Romans chapter 3 verse 1 where he asks what is the benefit of being Jewish. He says much in many ways because to them the oracles of God has been committed. That means in a way we can say the Jewish people gave to human mankind the word of God. Paul says they gave us the covenants. They gave us the belief in the one true God in heaven and the creator of the heavens and the earth. And of course, Paul also says, through them also Messiah, according to the flesh, came into this world. Therefore, I do believe that anti-Semitism at its very root is actually a demonic power upon our world and probably the most powerful demonic power. Because if Satan will succeed to annihilate the Jewish people, he will be able to frustrate the plans of God with humanity. He will be able to wipe away the people group which God called to be a blessing for human mankind. To wipe away this people which God says, through you I will bless the whole world. To wipe away the people which gives the word of God to human mankind and which gave them the Messiah and the Bible tells us one day they will bring a, an, an usher, a kingdom of peace, a millennium messianic kingdom upon this world where Jerusalem, this very city is the capital of it. That's why the enemy, Satan, he hates Jerusalem and he hates the Jewish people and therefore throughout century he tried to kill the seed of Abraham because he understood if he is able to kill the seed of Abraham, he is able also to destroy the salvation plans of God with human mankind. So it is a demonic force which is driving people, people like Adolf Hitler, which is driving people like Pharaoh and Haman to wipe out the Jewish people. But thanks God they never succeed because we are serving an almighty God. He is the one who keeps his people and he is the one who also watches over his people day and night. But never Nevertheless, we have to take the challenge of anti-Semitism very serious. It is even a very powerful force in our world today. And the newspapers of this week, they actually say that all across Europe, new anti-Semitic parties and forces are rising up and they're becoming a powerful political force in Europe. And if you look to the Holocaust in our German history, we see even that some of the key theologians in Germany, they have been deceived by this demonic teaching of anti-Semitism and they became collaborators of Adolf Hitler. And therefore we need to learn a lesson today and we have to ask ourselves what prevents us as Christians actually to commit the same crimes? What are the lessons of the Holocaust? What we can learn? And follow me to the following place which teaches us how to avoid the traps of anti-Semitism in the very time in which we are living today. It 
this here at Yad Vashem where we have to ask ourselves the question, how can we protect our lives from the dangers of anti-Semitism? How can we protect our hearts and our minds from this demonic deception which uh, deceived millions of people throughout history? First of all, I believe it is important for us to understand the severe consequences as we turn ourselves against the Jewish people. The Bible describes the Jewish people as the apple of God's eye. And he says in the prophet Zechariah chapter 2, he says, if you touch my people, if you touch Israel, you are actually touching the apple of God's eye. And that's a very dangerous place to be. It's like what God said to Abraham. He says, I will bless those who bless thee, but I will also curse those who are cursing you as a nation. So in a way it's a stern warning from God that if we touch the Jewish people, if we talk bad about them, if we are portraying stereotypes about them which are not true, we are actually are dealing with God. Secondly, it's important for us to understand the biblical truth about the Jewish people. They are called by God and the Bible tells us that he made an eternal covenant with them. So to turn against the Jewish people, actually we are turning ourselves against the covenants of God. And that's why the Christian embassy exists and that's why there are many institutions around the world which do speak the truth about Israel. And that's also why Yad Vashem exists to inform the nations, inform pastors around the world about the very dangers of anti-Semitism and of the dangers of, of turning against the Jewish people. But then thirdly, it is important for us to have a sharpened conscience. That means that our inner heart is constantly in an attitude that we realize that there is something wrong in our society or in our country. And the conscience of the German people to a large degree wasn't sharp enough. And they didn't react in the way how they should have reacted. But I was very touched some years ago by the testimony of a woman from a little village in France. It was called chambeau sur lyon It's a village which was recognized by Yad Vashem here as the entire village being righteous among the Gentiles. The reason why this village was recognized by Yad Vashem uh, to receive this amazing status was that, this, was that the entire village decided to stand up on behalf of the Jewish people and they saved the lives of more than 5,000 Jews and other people which were persecuted during the Holocaust. And I remember well visiting that village some years ago, uh, seeing a film about the inhabitants of that village village as they were being saving uh, the Jewish people and afterwards they were asked by a journalist and one old lady was being asked by the journalist why did you do what you did why did you risk your life to help Jewish people and in an almost surprised way she turned to the journalist and she said isn't this what we are supposed to do and I, real, I realized that this woman actually, she had a sharpened conscience. She knew in her heart that helping the Jewish people, helping the needy, helping those who are persecuted, this is what we as Christians are supposed to do. And I hope and pray that all over the world, the church will have this sharpened conscience to stand up when, they, when it is needed to defend and to speak up on behalf of the Jewish people. But finally, also, I want to encourage you. The Bible promises us that if we stand up for the Jewish people, if we decide to bless the nation of Israel, he says, I'm going to bless you also. So standing at the side of Israel is something where God says, I'm watching you as you are standing up on behalf of my beloved people, and I will bless you also in return. So these are the lessons from the Holocaust. And I want to ask you to partner with us to support this incredible institution, Yad Vashem, and to become a partner of Yad Vashem and help Yad Vashem through the International Christian Embassy. May the Lord bless you. Welcome to the world from Jerusalem, overlooking Mount Zion here in Jerusalem. And today we have with us a very special guest, Mr. Shaya Ben Yehuda, the Director of International Relations at Yad Vashem. Shaya, it's such a great honor to have you here on our show today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's a wonderful opportunity to speak and to reach out to the Christian community. Thank you for the invitation, Jürgen. 
It's a great pleasure. You are working at Yad Vashem. It's uh, one of the largest organizations here in this land. And I believe every tourist which visited Israel, uh, visited the, uh, the, the place of Yad Vashem. Uh, tell our viewers what exactly is Yad Vashem? What is the vision and purpose of that institution? Yad Vashem is a world uh, Holocaust center. It has been established by survivors who came from the Holocaust at the early 50s. It's a national state uh, uh, authority. And Yad Vashem was established as a place uh, to gather the document and to study it, a research institute and a place of commemoration. Along the years, we have realized that in order to tell the stories, especially to those who have not been there, you must build a museum. So Yad Vashem opened the first museum in the world in 1970. About a decade ago, we opened a new museum at Yad Vashem, which is the most important museum about the Holocaust today in the world, which enabled people to understand what the Jewish people went through during the Holocaust. It's a place that gives you a little bit insight to what it was, because one who has not been there cannot really grasp it. Mm. But it tells you in a meaningful way that people survived such an atrocity. What does Yad Vashem actually mean, this uh, Hebrew word? This Hebrew word, Yad Vashem, is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, where the Isaiah, Isaiah speaks to the nation, or not to the nation, to every human being, and I say that every human being who will follow the way of uh, justice, the way of righteousness, the way of the Lord, will have a place of memory within the house of the Lord. This is the phrase Yad Vashem, a, memor a memorial to the name. Now, Shaya, with your history as the son of Holocaust survivors, you undertook a very courageous step uh, seven years ago. You went to the leadership of Yad Vashem and you challenged them to establish a Christian desk at Yad Vashem. This, I believe, is a historic step for the nation of Israel and, of course, also for Jewish-Christian relations around the world. What exactly is this, Yad, uh, this Christian desk at Yad Vashem? I've said that if in this place we can establish a Christian friends of Yad Vashem, which will enable us to teach the Christian world, to build bridges between Jews and the Christian world, and also to raise support for Yad Vashem and uh, to the work of Yad Vashem, it will give a message that we can put the past behind us. We cannot ignore it, but we can put the past behind us and build a joint mission, a, min a ministry together to build a better future for humanity. And that means there are coming today pastors groups, there are coming all kind of Christian groups to visit Yad Vashem and to be educated about our Christian history, about the Holocaust and how the church acted during that time. You're absolutely right. Uh, within two weeks before uh, the Holocaust Memorial Day, Yom HaShoah, we are opening another a seminar for Christian leaders, for uh, Christian pastors from all over the world. We bring them for a week to Yad Vashem in order that they can study about the Holocaust, they can study about the work of Yad Vashem, and they can study about how they have to teach their own communities. And when they go back, they can continue to educate their communities. You mentioned Yom HaShoah, and I believe it's important for our listeners today to understand the significance which the Holocaust, the Shoah, still has on the Israeli soul today. In just a few days from now, we are engaging this uh, Yom HaShoah, where for one minute the whole nation will come to a standstill and remember the six million Jews which uh, died and perished during the Holocaust. Um, how would you describe the weight which the Holocaust still has for the average Israeli today? When you come to this day that all the nation is, all the nation is united, there are no parties, there are no uh, different uh, groups of the society. We are all mourning together the lost, but we also think about our responsibility to work together mm. in order to ensure that we know how to defend this country, we know how to ensure the future of this country, and also to value 
what we have managed to rebuild following the Holocaust. This morning when I woke up in the newspapers here in Israel, I read all over Europe there are radical right-wing parties which are anti-Semitic. Semitic. They are spreading like mushrooms again in, in Europe. Does this concern you and what could Christians do also in order to avoid that history will repeat itself? We feel that it's an obligation for Christians and every human being who understand what can happen when you ignore the right of uh, anyone to exist, to stand together and not to turn your back and to say, it doesn't matter, it, do it doesn't come to me, because if you turn your back, eventually it will come to you. So I think everyone, it's not just Christian, it's not just Jews, it's all of us together. But we, as Jews and Christians, who believed in the, in the Bible, and we know that everyone was created in the image of the Lord. We have a common responsibility to ensure that the world will understand that you cannot take the right to exist from anyone. Everyone has the right to exist because we were all created in the image of the Lord. So what we just heard is that we can take an active part in the work of Yad Vashem. That means wherever you are, you can become a modern righteous among the Gentiles, that you support the work of Yad Vashem, that you take a stand against anti-Semitism. And I do want to encourage you to check out the website of the Christian Friends of Yad Vashem and to find out about the different ways how you can support this very important work here in Jerusalem. As we spoke about it, it does touch the very soul of the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. And by supporting Yad Vashem, you are supporting the ent entire nation of Israel. So may the Lord bless you as you support this very important institution in Israel. And Shaya, thank you so much for coming today and for sharing your heart about Yad Vashem and about the Holocaust. This was so precious. May the Lord bless all of you. Thank you very much. God bless you. some more than others. Still, we all have it only 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 days a year. Time is like a river. It flows and it doesn't return. Today, that special block of time, today is the key that locks out yesterday's nightmares and unlocks tomorrow's dreams. Our time. We are 24 hours in a day. How much of, of, of that time are we actually given to the Lord? Yeah, the, the funny thing about time is that it doesn't matter how much you think or you do not you do not think about it, it just runs. It just keeps going. Your life, your life, my life, mm -hmm. their life. But that's the thing that as young people we think that we have a lot of time. We do, we do. We have to be careful with the time. I mean, and then the time actually belongs to, 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 to God. He has your days. Psalm 19, 12. Our days are numbered. Mm -hmm. Or live your day as your days will be numbered so you will gain wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing if I would tell you that you would die tomorrow. You will probably live your day tomorrow differently than mm -hmm. no, today. Definitely. Now the question is why? Because your days are numbered. You realize that your time is up. We often, we often talk about tithing and so on when it comes to money, but what about our time? We are 24 hours in a day. How much of, of, of that time are we actually given to the Lord? We are now in the Mount of Olives and, you know, we are in the middle of the graveyard. All of them have a starting and end date. Now, the, the interesting thing is that there's a small line in between, and that short, small line is our lives. Mm -hmm. That's how it, it's, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's a good uh, image of how short our life is. It's a short line.
there's so much fun things to do and young people want to have fun so you go on vacation, you are out with your friends, you not to think about the serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. People, young people come from around the world and they give their time and their money which they could spend on a vacation but they decide to come to surf here in Israel to give the society of Israel or certain parts um, their time and their love so that's I think a good example for what young people can do to invest their time wisely. So this morning we were at the Mount of Olives looking at how the city of Jerusalem has been built in time. It took a certain amount of time to build the city of Jerusalem. The same way we were at the graveyard where all the gravestones have a beginning and end date. You know, I have a beginning date and I also have an end date. And that line in between those two dates is my life. And we went also to the ship to observe how people are living their daily lives and using their time and their decisions and that's where they are at the moment. The place where I'm at the moment in my life is, comes in my time and in what, what type of decisions do I do in my time. So with Arise, we want to encourage young people to live their lives for God, to use your time for the calling that God gave only for you. We're working here every single day to help the young generation, to encourage them to use their time and give them tools to make correct decisions to build the kingdom of God worldwide. So God bless you from here from Jerusalem and I hope that you have an awesome day today and use your time for the kingdom of God. Don't forget to visit our website where you will be able to find the Arise Bay show and the Arise Now magazine in addition to a lot of other interesting material. God bless you.